What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Um, we honor and respect the masters that came before us and strive to follow their example. Honesty to myself and others at all times. Humility in thought, words, and deeds of those above and beneath me. Patience. I will put the needs of others before that of my own, but not the greedy. Sincerity. I will fear only my lack of sincerity. Abdul I am in the love of all and all love is in me. I am a part of all and all is a part of me. I am one with all and all is one with me. I can succeed as a part of all and fail as an individual. I can be all that I wish in all as long as my wish is to stay in all. I am never alone. All is, I am. All can, I can. All does, I do. It's Tim J. Let's get this thing popping over here. Press 2 if you already shared the video. We're on part 3 today. The Ancestors versus the Gods. I'm Coach Kyer, Team Taurus, Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm definitely representing the gods and my ancestors. But, oh, so please, before I get to that, please post your name, your team zodiac, what city and state you're representing. Give out a shout. And um, press 2 if you share this video. All day has just been a story about how I started my morning off. It's the beginning of the year. Um, I want to set some clarity. I want to set some boundaries on some things I don't need to be doing this year at the beginning. The next video, the fourth video, will be about the beginning of the year. I've been mentioning it like in all three of these videos, but I'm going to go all the way in on this next video. Um, we're going to have some conversation about the gods versus the ancestors so all my stuff come from true stories too so the other night i'm on the phone with a sister and she's telling me that someone this is this, this should go back to these predators out here spiritual predators out here these phony practitioners and they ain't the practice it's the phony practitioners so she tells she tells me she says, "Hey, um, the reason I'm not winning right now is because I have um, a gra a grandmother, an ancestor grandmother that's blocking my blessings." But I had just told her I was like, "The reason why you got a lot of this stuff going on is because I was like because you." I said, where's your altar at? Where's your altar? You got you got an altar set up? And she was like, um, nah, sort of. But she was like, one of my grandparents is blocking my blessings. And I was like, if you're having a problem with children or relationships or money, you need to be going to the gods. I said, everything, because she talked to me for like 45 minutes before I even said something. Just listening. And I was like, the reason, your problem is the gods have abandoned you. you the gods ain't sitting on your altar. You ain't, you, the God, whichever gods you're serving, they, they, they're not coming to work. And, then, and they won't come to work until you appease them or prove that you are worthy of them coming to work. You can't just go build an altar, put a statue on it or a picture and light some incense and some candles and think the, answer, think the God is supposed to show up. Gods are not do boys. Let me take a swallow of this water as I repeat that. Gods and goddesses are not your do boys. This one should be called an education about the gods. But I'm going to talk about ancestors versus the gods. There is no versus. There's no versus. But you need to know which one is more powerful and why so you can start operating properly. So let's, let's let's do a quick check. Who got altars? If you got an altar, press 1. If you don't have an altar set up, press 0. Not in between. Nope. If you got an altar set up in your house, press 1. If you don't have an altar set up in your house, press 0. 
Let's just see who's on the line. Team Leo in Mississippi. I see you, Team Sag, Long Beach, Team Scorpio, New Jersey. I want to see who got altar set up already. Now, on your altar, you can have the four elements that's necessary are the four elements fire, air, water, and earth. Right? So you need incense for the air. You need some food on there for the earth or a plant. You need uh, candles for the fire. And then you and water is water. You need a nice glass of water or a nice bowl of water. All right? And if you don't have an altar set up, then you should be taking notes. If you got an altar set up, you should be taking notes. Right? Now, your altar cannot be in your bathroom or your bedroom or closet or garage. Okay? That's that. Your altar is your um, communication device with the higher deities and other dimensions. What do they call that? Like the switchboard. You know how they used to like put the headphones on there? They'd be like, yes, I want to talk to so-and-so. They'd be like, hold on one second. Okay, I got so-and-so on the line. You want to talk to them? Yes, hold on, put them through. All right, I got you. I'm going to patch the line through. And then they'll take the cords and go, Shh. They'll pull out one thing and put it in there, and then they'll be talking together. You link the line. The line is linked together when you have an altar. Then you sit in front of the altar, and then you commune, you divine, you uh, do your work, you send your offerings. A lot of times you're proving your, proving your worthiness, though, by the time that you spend with your altar. What are your altar activities, right? You can't have altar... You can have altar activities. Your body is also your temple, so you can have altar activities any place, but your home should have an altar in it so you can have a communication device, sometimes a telep teleportation device, and a protection area. Yes, because your altar is going to also emit protection. Now, it don't have to be big and elaborate, but you need to have one if you want to have better communications with your higher self, your, you know, saying with the divine, which include gods and ancestors. The point of this video, Team Capricorn, New York City, I see you. What's up, Megan? The gods and the ancestors are different. My ancestors are people I know, or I would like to consider people who fed me. If my feet was under your table when you was living on the planet Earth, then you damn sure one of my ancestors because you was feeding me. But when you die, a lot of times your ancestors are unaware of the truth about what's happening after you pass. So after, you, after they pass, they're very confused and they're in a state of confusion. They're in a state of confusion and they are angry first because somebody, everybody lied to them about what was going to happen right after you die. Okay? So, your ancestors need money. They still need food. They still need clothing. They need some place to go. When you die, you just don't go to heaven. You just don't go off to the next place. Unless you have prepared yourself thoroughly, thoroughly, mentally, spiritually, physically, all of that. It's got to be prepared, player. If it ain't, then you ain't got no place to go. You don't have a place. You can be dead and homeless. I don't want to be dead and homeless. But many of our ancestors are dead and homeless. And that's why we burn ancestor money to our ancestors so they can have some money so they can get on their feet. Because ain't nobody over there giving out free food. It's still for sale. You're going to need money over there. Is this new to anybody? If this is new, press 1. If this ain't new, press 0. Because some of y'all watching the video, this may be new to you. So this this information. So if this is new, press 1. If this is not new, press 0. I'm still taking roll call. Seeing who's on. I'm checking the pulse to see who I'm talking to right now. So when you die, I don't care what religion you are operating in or what spiritual system, there's an afterlife going on that still got levels. So you hear people all the time talking about um, I ain't coming back here. This is my last lifetime. And they just be talking. They just be talking. They, they have not done not one bit of work to prepare themselves for after they die. They ain't done now drop. Zero. 
But they're talking about this will be my last. This is my last go round. This is my last go round. Okay. So you have to prepare just like you prepare to graduate from high school. When you get married, when you go on a honeymoon, when you're about to cook some food, there's all this prep that needs to go into it. But if you ain't prepping, then how can you? How You're not going to have nothing if you don't prep. You ain't going to have nothing. Melanie Bay is on here with her fine self. She be doing the afro. Or oh, she knows she got to go model. If she don't prep, there won't be no job. for. Them. When she get there, she unprepared. They'll turn around and be like, yo, beat it. So, how, before I get to how you get prepared, First thing in how to get prepared is open, deprogram your mind that you think that when you die, it's over. When you die, it's just beginning, player. It may be three years to five years before you come back or 30 to 50 years before you come back. But you don't just get no pass because you died or committed suicide or whatever, or you died from a chronic disease that you just get to go on to some other place and never come back to earth. You, If you're watching this video, you've already been recycled Hundreds, if not thousands of lifetimes. Let me get hashtag lifetimes on here if you're paying attention. Put hashtag lifetimes. By the time somebody get to me, you're an old soul needing to be reminded. That's why I make these videos, to remind you folks that my DNA is talking to your DNA. My soul is talking to your soul. I'm not talking to your left brain. I ain't talking to the conscious side of I ain't talking to your consciousness. I'm talking to your subconsciousness, your unconsciousness. I'm talking to your DNA. I'm talking to your spirit. My spirit is talking to your spirit. I'm not concerned about your opinions. So many people give me their opinions. I used to give people my opinions all the time. I ain't concerned no more. Lifetimes. You can't remember them. I think it's a waste of money to get a lifetime, a past life regression. I don't know what just happened. Something just happened. Lifetimes. So I don't believe in getting a past life regression because it's singular. You telling me what I was in my past lifetime is telling me about one of my fingernails I just clipped. Without telling me about the fingers, the nerve endings, the muscles, the palm of my hand, my wrist, my arm, my elbow. Bruh, I've been here thousands of lifetimes. How can one past life regression tell me anything? But the predators out here, the sinister, sets these predators out here, knows that you're curious about past life regressions and past life things, but you think you only be, to to get a past life regression reading, you only asking about two lives, the last one and this one. If you was going to focus on anything, I'd focus on this one. Right, this is what's going to make the next one. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> My bad. So, in these lifetimes, your ancestors recycle, but the gods don't. Somebody type that. Ancestors recycle, gods don't. So when we helping our ancestors, it's because they in bad shape. They need money, they need food, they need clothing, they need prayer. They still need to go to class. They still need to learn things. Did you know that when you go to a spiritual class, that your ancestors are there watching, learning at the same time? Your ancestors watch when you go to class. When you die, you still can get education. Did you know that? Gods don't recycle, though. So when the sister was like, well, you know, I got an answer to this blocking my blessings. I thought, predator, predator alert. She's not a predator, but she believes a predator. And she kept talking about, it's so many people got so much information out here. So many people got so much information out here. I don't know who to believe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I was just like, well, there we go. We see, we see your issue. You listen to too many people. You don't got knowledge. You just got information. Knowledge is no delay. Information is just data. Then no the ledge is the application, but you got to use trial and error. Then wisdom is the application of knowledge, which is trial and measure. Third step, 
Then you have understanding, understanding, and understanding where you walk under your knowledge and your wisdom. But you might it's gonna take you cycles to get that. It took me a lot of cycles to get this right here. So and be able to share it confidently and happily. The ancestors can still be sick from they could die from cancer and still have cancer in in the afterlife and need to be healed of cancer so they'll stop coming back with it. Some people try to rush back too soon and they come back with the cancer gene still in them. They pick parents who have sickle cell so they can pick up the sickle cell gene and keep going on with it more and more. Doesn't sound too bright, but because of our religion and our hard-headedness that we don't want to listen to people, then guess what happens? We come back with the same diseases. You know about children being born with diseases? They, they, they brought that disease from a past life. They died from that disease and it's coming back. But you could stay on the other side long enough to get healed, then come back and you wouldn't bring that disease back. Or you could defeat the disease before you die on this plane and you don't got to bring it back. I ain't doing nothing to you today. I got four messages to deliver that Spirit told me to deliver today on today at the beginning of the year for me and my growth and I'm going to deliver them. I love you, honey. You ain't got to be on. I don't, I don't know what you, why you, I mean, you just on here. Um, can't we burn a healing incense blend or offering to help? Yes, there are several things that we must and need to do if you got integrity to help your ancestors. Because one day you'll be an ancestor, so if you don't pay yours forward, because most of the, why do our ancestors need so much help, James Brown? Why do our ancestors need so much help? I've given you enough information to answer this question. Who wants to answer that question? Why do our ancestors need so much help? That's part one. I got another one. The gods don't need help, but the ancestors need a lot of help. Why? I have an altar set up, and I got gods at the very top, ancestors down next. And then I got the offerings down under that. Why do you think I got it like that? Because of the lies they were told before they died. Because they didn't prep here before dying. Because they struggle in the afterlife. They didn't get the work in before they passed. Depends on their life. All of y'all are correct. They need help because they didn't set nothing up. They ain't set nothing up before they left. So now they jacked up. Now they And then guess what? The number one ability that they have on the other side where they jacked up is to come back and ask us for help. Or come back and steal from us. Your ancestor will steal from you. Steal from you. Steal from you. Your ancestor will come. Because they, they think you owe them something. You're the only person that they know. Especially if you're spiritual. They're going to definitely come back and steal from you. If you don't know how to like properly take care of them. If you got a proper set up shrine for your ancestors. They're not going to steal from you. They're going to come be nourished. Because your shrine is their buffet. Your shrine for your ancestors is your ancestors' buffet. It's like a travel center. They come there for everything. They come there for clothes, shoes. Who shared this video, by the way? Press 2 if you shared this video. If you didn't share this video, side eye. What you mean don't let them steal? They still have the ability to come back. They'll help us, so we must help them. No, Khadijah. No, 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 no. You ain't got to help them. You ain't got to help your ancestors. Let's be very clear. You don't have to. You won't go to hell if you don't help them neither. You could not help your ancestors. Put yourself on and set yourself up for the afterlife. Die and have a really swell afterlife, especially if you like lived karma, like negative karma free this lifetime. So you don't have to help your ancestors. It's a very good idea too, though. Because as you help them, you learn about yourself and then you develop. But you don't, it, it ain't mandatory. 
It's like it ain't mandatory that you got to serve the gods. It helps a lot. I help my ancestors and I serve the gods. And I've learned so much about myself. Go go come teach this class and they don't have to help you either. They not do boys. I said that before you got on, Go-Go. Gods, the gods are not your do boys. The ancestors got a little bit more obligation to help you than the gods. However, let's go and talk about why? First off, I was like, I'm going to answer the question, who's stronger, who's more influential? The gods is more influential because they don't need you at all. Your ancestors may need you, for sure. And spirit come help you when you acknowledge them and you on their squad, they come and, they'll come and help you. Even when you're doing some F-boy stuff or F-girl stuff, they'll come and help you because you have been faithful. Now, all of them won't. Some of them will be like, no, I don't get down, I don't do that. Some guys don't do certain things. You feel me? Uh, you can't get one God to come get smoked with another God. It's a certain it's a certain folks out here, they think that they, because they roll with Kali Ma, they can just have Kali Ma come run up on, run up on other people and run up on their gods. Bruh, Kali Ma don't want no smoke with Ganesha. Kali Ma knows if you're going to go sick her on somebody, on another God, then you must be crazy. She going she gonna to ride on you, imbecile. I seen that happen. That just recently. Y'all know who I'm talking about too. Y'all always talking about if you don't this, if you don't that, Kali Ma going to do something. You can't threaten somebody with Kali Ma. Like you just going to go get Kali Ma and be like, go over there and get that person. Yo, the guys don't work like that. They're not your do boys. Um, nah, jokers will try anything. Uh, go, go, you know that. So, um, yes. That shows you are not learned. And it shows you stupid. And, and you really not learn it. Go, go, I always say that you are spiritually immature. Those Senyata's words. When you do crazy stuff on the spirit realm, it means you're because you're spiritually immature. And that's what causes you to be not learned. You, it, once you hit spiritual maturity, you start getting very well learned. Boy, you get so much help, but at a low spiritual maturity level, you can't learn because the, the, the regular teachers won't even come rock with you because of your low spiritual maturity. I definitely won't. Not no more. I'm finished with you. I'm finished with all you all you lazy ass jokers in my inbox asking me something and we ain't broke bread before. You ain't took no courses. You ain't doing nothing on your own. Are you looking for shortcuts? Don't come ask me what something means. If you done came to me and got a reading, you one of my students, something like that, we chop it up on the regular. You high end. I know you got knowledge yourself and you doing your work. But if you a stranger and you just pop up in my inbox talking about, well, I know coach, no, I'm going to just go ask him. I'm going to tell you, there are no shortcuts on the spiritual path, you lazy grasshopper. I'm sorry, you lazy caterpillar, excuse me. You, it's going to be a long time before you turn into a butterfly. The lazy ass. There are no shortcuts on the spiritual path, you lazy caterpillar. You're not even a grasshopper. Honey, if, you only, if I had a half a penny... For how many times people said I was a hater and don't know nothing? I'd be broadcasting from Bali right now. I'd be broadcasting from Bali. What? Lord, I'm mercy, I'd be rich. Um. So, the ancestors are like people. If I'm hungry and I'm weak, I can't help you. Excuse me, let me just sit back on that. If I'm hungry and weak and you ask me to come move some furniture, change some tires, do some yard work, I haven't eaten. I haven't eaten. I don't feel good about myself. How can I come do some work and help you? 
I came with a drink. That's drank with an A too. I see somebody playing this plane has landed. So we shout out to all my Aries Scorpio Risings from the Detroit area. So the ancestors can't help you if they're weak. So I help my ancestors so they can be strong in their next mission. They helped me while I was that while I was young and didn't know on this physical plane, they helped me. So you know what? I'm gonna help them. There may be some karma that they've got with me, and now I'm gonna look out. Then when they get strong, they can go further on, heal themselves, proceed in what they're doing, or they can choose to help me. Sometimes they help me without me asking. Two of my ancestors that helped me without me asking is my grandma and my daddy. That's why I really don't want no smoke with nobody. Because, like, I used to be when I first started, that's how I'd be. I'd be, like, if I wanted some smoke or something was going on, I'd be thinking about calling a really high-end deity to go over there and damn do something to you. Because the deity would be serving me. Like, I done done mad work for the deity to come and sit on my altar, but I'm serving the deity. So the deity is like, who bothering you? But I have noticed that I ain't had to call a deity in no defense for no personal human on this planet because my daddy and my grandmama is quick with the smoke. <gasps> no, don't say that. My, my grandma is so well taken care of. Yeah, not all ancestors are created equal. Hold on. Do well-balanced altars filter ancestors who may be malevolent? Or does it keep them content by feeding and caring along with the rest? When you feed an ancestor, if you don't put their name on it, all your ancestors come. All of your ancestors come if you don't put a name on it. If you don't say this is for, if, if, if I don't say this is for Eliza Hilliard and Arthur Carter, then everybody on my altar is coming first and then everybody they attached to is coming. I have, I, I have, I got to feed everybody. That's why I have so much ancestor money because I just burn it. I burn the big bills because I know so many coming. It's so many that I ain't even named that I don't even know. I just burn a lot of ancestor money with the bigger, with the bigger denominations. Until they told me to stop. How long did I sell ancestor money? Three or four years? I was the first one selling ancestor money non-oriental. Me. I made that video. It's a lot of ancestor money videos, but mine's the oldest. And that's cool because I'm following instructions. But I'm following instructions from the gods to talk about ancestor money. Because now, when my ancestors see that I'm helping strengthen them, they look at the gods I'm serving. My grandma was a staunch Christian, but she know about Ganesha, Ma'at, Vishnu, Lakshmi, Saraswati, Heru, um, Ogun, Ochosi, uh, Hanuman, uh, Elegba. She know about everybody now. My grandma is so educated now after she died. My daddy is so educated after he after he died through the ancestors that I serve. Cause they ain't got no resistance now, cause they like, yo, how did you get in contact with me? I've been trying to get in contact with all my children. Nobody can hear me, but you can hear me. Cause that's the one talent that they got. They got they got the ability to be able to come back and make contact with some of us. So I'm the only one been working on my psychic channels. I'm talking about like for real, for real. Not that my other cousins don't, or my sister don't, but when I hear it, I'm Johnny on the spot. What is it? Y'all want something? Sometimes they get a little ornery. If I ain't done nothing in a while, they'll be on it. But my grandma and my daddy don't bother. That's why I don't want no smoke, yo, because my daddy is still ruthless.
I don't think he's been in car, in car, he he been gone 13 years. He's still ruthless. He's loving now. He, he was loving when he was here. But now he's seized. You know, he got to calm, calm down a little bit. But he got so much love for me. He don't even call me Kaya. I mean, he might call me Kaya, but he recognized me as my birth name. He recognized me as his son. He's still attached to me as he ain't left my altar yet. So he's still very attached to me in a very protective mode. He said when he was living, he would kill he would kill me or kill for me and go do the time. I never had no problem growing up. I never got bullied because my daddy was, he was always with the smoke. He always had the heat on him. He always had a pistol on him. So what do you think he's doing now? My grandma told me I had the best hair. It was one of her favorites. Out of all my other cousins, who she, she had 13, she had 14 children, so I don't tell her how many grandchildren. So out of all her great, all, all of her grand, that's my first cousins, I'm the only one that's got an altar up with her on it that feeds her and gives her ancestor money. You don't want no smoke with my grandma, yo. She, and she was loving, but she was tough. You don't want no smoke with my Aunt Maggie. I don't want nobody to have no smoke with them. My ancestor altar, I liked it. Like At first, I was like, ooh, I'm so protected. I'm so protected. You don't get a little puffed up. I don't want to be puffed up like that. I'm very proud of the protection that I get from them. But I see when Joker try to run up on me and stuff start not happening well for them. That I know that's my daddy and my grandma and them. I just be like, yo, they ain't mean, like, but if you don't mean no harm, they already know. That you don't mean no harm. They ain't gonna do nothing. But it's jokers out here that I can't really see. That I can't see. It's, it's jokers out here that I can't see that may be trying to attack me. That my grandma, my grandmama, and my daddy, and my aunt Maggie, and my other ancestors is on it like, uh, like neck bone juice, like my man said. Let it marinate like neck bone juice. So the ancestors need our help. The gods are waiting on us to prove that um, we deserve their assistance. Because we're children of the gods in the spiritual realm. That's why when the jokers become, we talking about some African science, Africa. Africa ain't my roots, player. The stars, the etheric realm. These other dimensional planes are my are my roots. Africa is a holograph. The earth is a holograph. Okay? That's a section in this holograph that some people misname Africa, which means Africa, which means to divide. Which I don't even really like even rocking with that because if you keep saying that you so into Africa, you wouldn't keep saying this, you would keep using the word that means division. You go back to something original, like a language or something, then I'll rock with you. But I don't really have to go through all that because we're just, we just keeping it moving. You feel what I'm saying? Don't want to get off topic. The ancestors need your help. Then they can help you. The gods want to see some loyalty and some consistency, and then they will help you. So do not say there's an ancestor blocking your blessing. You can go to a god. Some of, and that's the problem too. Some of y'all going to your ancestors. Your ancestors in a weak state because you ain't taking care of them. And then when you should have just went to a God. You want justice and you went to your grandma, but you ain't feeding your grandma. Or your grandma may not even, you may not even have connected with her yet. You might have just got started on this path and you ain't even connected with her. And you want your grandma to give you justice. Your grandma is weak and feeble because you ain't been feeding, ain't nobody been feeding her. I'm, uh, let me go see my aunt or several other deities that depend on what kind of justice I'm looking for. You feel what I'm saying? Do your own research. See, y'all wait for me to be like, Who's, who should I go to if I want strict justice in court and such? You lazy. Go, go, go put the work in. I'm just telling, I'm trying to help you, uh, telling you stop doing what you're doing. Okay, let me read some comments. What's up, Miss Boyd? You need to have your ancestors in alignment. Lord, yes. My video on ancestor money put you on. Yay! There should be one guard in the gate, so to speak. Same here, Latanya. Yay! You love my hair? Neck bone juice. That's right. Tamare. Yep. I said the same for the ancestors. Um, if you're trying to shortcut the guys, they see that too. 
How you not going to take care of your own but jump over to a deity for help? Your first line of defense is your ancestors. Theoretically, I agree with that. Theoretically, if it's set up right, the first line of defense is my ancestors. However, if I'm in a pickle and I'm not Kair and something is jam jammed up, what about people who ain't got no ancestors? Who ain't got no knowledge of their ancestors? What about orphans who don't have no knowledge of their ancestors? Then what? If you don't know who your ancestors are, there's a lot of cats out here. And I, I would start, if you don't know who your ancestors are, I would go to a deity to help me, guide me to get the right information about my ancestors. Right. Because the deity got the supreme protection. Your ancestor can't do the protection that the gods can do. Then when the gods see you lining up with your ancestors, bam, then you're doubling down. Then the gods is like, ah, oh, you're looking pretty good there. And you are. Feel what I'm saying? So they see you and they know what you got access to. So for me, they'd be like, Did his, is this too big for his grandmother and his father to handle it? Or some of his ancestors, or if his ancestors um, are choosing um, are choosing not to handle it, then why should we come in? Can they not handle it, and only we can handle it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't. Yeah, I don't know. I I ain't got nobody where we agree all together. What if your father's been dead for thirty two years? He an ancestor, right? But. Where I come back to what Gogo -Go just said is in proper order, get your ancestors together. But you can get your ancestors and the gods together at the same time. You can. But then you also got to look at why are you getting in trouble? Why are these things happening to you that you need to go to the ancestors all the, all the time? I don't go to my ancestors all the time. I be out here working. If you get too crazy, not really too crazy. I do go get some assistance. But when you in the in, in the swing of things, your ancestors just fall in and start helping you without even, even you have to go petition them because they know what you're doing. If you always got to go petition your ancestors for help, to me, you kind of disjoin from your ancestors because why shouldn't they see you and watch you and just come in there? Ancestors are not like niggas. Let me make this point right here. Yes, yes, yes. Let me make this point right here. A nigga, a nigga, listen what a nigga do. This is white or black. You ain't got to go to nobody all the time. A nigga wants you to give them something and then they'll do for you what you did for them in that proportion and no more. That's it. So we think that when I go, when I need something, I'm going to go to the gods and the gods are going to do something for me in the proportion of what I give them and then that's going to be it. So you're treating the gods like a nigga. Don't do that. That's not smart behavior. So you always have reference to the gods in everything that you do, in every way that you walk, in every way. When I learned Tai Chi, Sanyata said, find a way to practice Tai Chi 24, 24 hours a day. That means always breathing down in my diaphragm, spine straight, chin slightly tucked, arms loose. Certain different dimensions of how you got the body. I'm just going through checking right now. Uh, steel wrapped in cotton, as we call it, for some of you out there who know what I'm talking about. And I'm, my, my body's always like this. Even if I didn't train for two weeks or even a year, I'm in that mind state of reverence to my practice. When you're in the mind state of reverence to your ancestors and to the gods, and then you add ri consistent ritual, whether it's once a week, every other day, every day, once you... You have to understand what, what are the acts of magic. What's an act of magic? Lighting the incense sometimes could be an act of magic. It's not high level, but it's an act of magic. If you get up every day and light an incense and say the Lord's Prayer, that was an act of magic, and that was consistency. You run out of incense and you still get up in the morning and say prayer. Act of magic. My daddy got up every morning and prayed, and every night before he went to sleep, he prayed. Act of magic. He ain't know, though, but I know. So, this whole summoning thing 
will be different than what you think. Was you watching the movies and they think summoning takes a whole bunch of conjuring. Sometimes though, when you need heavy lifting done and you already know it's outside of your scope and it's something really big, you do need to go to the ancestors and the gods and say, here's a really big plate. Here's a really big offering. Here you go. Here you go. Um, the Irish Brotherhood of the Shriners from the mountains in Galway is my ancestors. Then there you go. It, ancestors probably can also be like, if you identify with them and you start feeding them, they're going to come. You know how I know? Because Ifa and Yoruba is an African tradition and there's over 2 million white people practicing Ifa and Yoruba. The Yoruba gods from Africa, Ogun, Obatala, Shango, um, everybody, Yemeya, they don't give a damn what color you are. They looking at that offering. You put that offering out there and you sincere, they on the way. Over 2 million Caucasian, European, whites, whatever you want to call them, are registered as Ifa and Yoruba as their religion. Dressed in white, making... What? I seen that when I was at um, Baba One Day Ibn Bola's house. He married to a white woman now. The white, the white woman who was there um, helping him, he later married her. Right. So you're doing everyday act of gratitude, like Carly said, Team Scorpio in the building. Then they're more surrounding and your ancestors and the gods are walking with you. You're walking amongst the gods. You're walking amongst the ancestors. So that's your new gang gang. Yeah, yea, do I walk in the valley of the shadow of death? I shall fear no evil. Why am I fearing evil? Because I'm squatted up. Squad it up. I'm good to go. I'm good to go. Good to go. And if I go out here and get my head peeled, then guess who fault it is? Mine. Because something was happening with the squad where the squad is disagreeing with some things that I'm doing. I got to tighten up. So the squad will be like, you know what? Let's get it popping. But for those of y'all just coming on here, let me make my point so I can get off here and come back and make part four video today. Ancestors are underneath the gods. That's why on the altar, the gods are up top and they should be over your head. And the ancestors are the shelf down. The ancestors come down, okay? So if you have everybody on a plane like this, or you have this like one regular flat altar, and you have gods and ancestors, get you a shelf from Home Depot or Walmart and go up over that and then move the gods up on top of the ancestors. They should be separated. And stop making excuses about this the only space I got. That's a whole nother video about lazy practitioners with your altar game. I'm so sick and tired of jokers making excuses about why they ain't got no altar and why this ain't happening and why that. You lazy. You spiritually immature. You don't want to do the work. Hey, bro, I still love you unconditionally, but you're going to have to stay over there. I'm gang ganging up this year with the hard workers, the people who ain't lazy, and the people who don't make no excuses. That me. Um, oh, somebody said, like, what if you're... Um, You should always be given to your ancestors if you need them or not. I say, I, my un, mine is yo, uh, is and I give to the ancestors. My my phrase is it's better to it's better to feed the ancestors than to have them feed off of you. I don't need them feeding off of me from that realm. I do not need my ancestors feeding off of me. It's not comfortable. I seen. I know what it looked like. When I started feeding them, they started feeding off, feed, and they, they stopped feeding off of me. Everything tripled and quadrupled and went up. My energy levels, my success, my magic, everything. But when I wasn't feeding them, and they were feeding off of me, drained. Um. 
Somebody said, what if your father's been dead for 32 years? Then you need to get to work ASAP. You need to burn some bills. I will write his name on the bill in red ink. Order you some big bills. Type in Joss, Joss Paper Cart. I don't know what the link is off the top of my head, but I have it. If you inbox me, I'll send you the link for the Joss Paper. Like, if somebody inbox me too and ask me for a link to get some supplies, then I don't got no problem with that. Because I made a video earlier saying lazy people don't get in my inbox if you ain't broke bread. If you ain't spending no money with me or whatever, but you need to ask me about some supplies, I don't mind you inboxing me. I don't mind you inboxing me. Also, if you're watching this for the first time and you send me a friend request and you don't send no message, I do not accept friend requests without messages. That's why I only got 3,200 people. I got 100 people, all friend requests is sitting up there that they didn't speak, so they'll just sit there. I don't play that. I, don't, I, I ain't on here for friends or likes or whatever. I'm good. I'm a, I let go and let God. It makes me very happy. This makes me very happy to share. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. But if you need a link for ancestor money, I don't sell it no more. But I have a video up. So you can watch the video. But I'll send you the link where I get my ancestor money from online. I also get my money in Los Angeles. I get my money in um I get my money in Los Angeles and I also get my money in um Chinatown in New York. Washington DC doesn't have no ancestor money. Chicago don't have no ancestor money. Philly got some ancestor money. So Philly, New York, DC, I've gotten some money from Toronto. And I'm talking about big bills. Georgia got a couple of bills, but I mean like I need, I'm I'm already spoiled. I need I need things bigger than ten million. But if all you got is ten million or hundred million, burn them. If you got a bunch of hundred million, that's all. That's, that's the biggest bill they got. Buy them up. I started with the ten thousands. I had a lot of them. I burned a lot of ten thousand. I and I rolled a lot of gold paper when I first got started. A lot. I would watch a two hour movie and just fold ancestor money, then go outside and burn it. Every night I was watching a movie, folded ancestor money. Big old bag of ancestor money ready to go when I finish. Poof. Poof. Phelan, what up? That's it. Joshpaper.twocart.co. Hey, Lat Latifa is showing y'all mad love. I eat, my ancestors eat. Carly, one more time, honey. I eat, my ancestors eat. She, Carly doesn't want her ancestors feeding off of her either. No, no, no. I, I don't want my ancestors feeding off of me. We don't do that. I eat, they eat. They eat well. That's why I said my grandma is, 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 is loving it. That's why, I, why would they let somebody, let something happen to me? They'd be like, bro, something happened to you. We go back to being hungry. Can ancestors feed off of you even if you never met them? Absolutely. The better you do, the more they can feed off of you because your light is shining that much light, that much brighter. Or is it only the ancestors that know you in this lifetime? Nah, bro. Especially if they still down here walking on earth, they trying to eat off of you. The gods don't eat off of you, though. But don't mean you don't give the gods offerings, though. I give offerings to the god, but the gods are going to make it with or without me, player. So I'm going to recap, and then I'm going to say prayer, then I'm going to get out of here. And then drink me a whole quart of water. I'm going to try and drink four of these today. The ancestors are not more powerful than the gods. Stop saying your ancestors are blocking you from having something when you can't go to the gods. Sometimes, like, you need both. You need both. You need to be honoring your ancestors and honoring the gods. Yeah. You can have two separate you can have two separate altars if you want to. Or you can have one altar together. But as long as you got one altar together, make sure you got the make sure you got the gods on the top. Okay? I will also be opening up consultations to help you with your altar. Yep, like a 30-minute consultation. I'm going to listen, see what you got going on. I'm going to help you with altar construction and suggestions of who you should put on your altar, where you get your supplies, 
so you can get started on the right foot. Everybody has got different stuff. You know what I'm saying? I might do just do a webinar course on it, or I might just do individuals. Right now, I'm just doing individuals because I'm already behind in the three courses I'm trying to teach now. Four courses, including the I Ching. So an ancestor altar course. A whole nother story. Um, on a scale of one to ten, how useful was this? Um, what was the one thing that you pulled from this today that you can use right now that was helpful for you today or tomorrow? Uh, any other comments, questions, or feedback? And the Bakoa, Gejalakimenka, Tatia Tesara, Kabel Renat, Amcha Sak Venu, Tahara Nunara, Nagi Bo, the Shay Yikadeka, Kabavashami, Rakam Tarum, Rakame, the Zika Taker, to meet Gamma, Kasin Kadosh Baru, Tufka, the Hell out of Taker, the Keet Gehel, I'm Chapanese, or Craig Tushka Taker, Shabatanuka Bell, Ushma, the Zakatanu, your dear Tyler Mo, Baruch Shem, Kobo Makuto, Alam Vae. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll see y'all over there on YouTube. I'll see you on part four of the video. What's up, Lucy? This shouts out to all my students out here who got my Keep It Simple Astrology course. This shouts out to everybody who came and got a reading from Coach K ever. CoachKAstrology.info. If you need to get a follow-up, always know you got $50 off your consultation. You don't never pay full price. I always give a discount to my returning clients. Returning clients. Why people be in my inbox talking about uh, when the next time you're going to have a special? What should I say? What should I say? What should I say when somebody says, when's the next time you're going to have a... I noticed that your special's over. I ain't never spent no money with you before, but I, don't, I, I, want, I want the first time to be, you know, when you're having a special. When's the next time you're having a special? But I'm going through something, boy. Whew. Trying to get my money right. I'm going through something. What should I say? Uh, James said, put the names of specific ancestors to feed them or just a place for ancestors, period. All will come. Feed often and with respect. Yes, sir. <laughs> Alana says, hell no. And Karen says, stop asking for discounts. And Monique says, just tell them today. Sometime later on today, I'll be offering a discount. Just hold your breath. That's what you want me to tell them, Monique. Stop being so mean. Angel, hi. Because people go through hardships and don't have funds. Or are you a household with one income? Oh, no, those are excuses, honey. No, 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 no. Those are excuses. I don't believe in people. The hardships that you go through are the hardships that you deserve. I didn't, I didn't put you through a hardship. I didn't put you through a hardship. That wasn't me. I didn't cause you. I didn't, I didn't cause nobody ever looking at me. I, I I never caused a person harm. And if I did, I already paid for it. I already went back and made my made it right with that person. But I didn't cause anybody no hardships. And I have, um, I have given so much to folks for free for years that how could you come to me and be like when are you going to have a discount I have a discount on YouTube it is all free I have a discount on Facebook just scroll through here what subject you looking for I'm absolutely sure I done gave you some free stuff so I don't, I don't listen to nobody when they come talking about um, have uh, they got a hardship I didn't cause your hardship man stop taking people's sorrows as your own the individual asking for hardship caused themselves hardship. When I was up under hardships, I caused it. When I'm up under success, I caused it. I seen some people give me some grace now. I see some people give me some grace. I see some people give me some, but I, I, but I don't wear that out. I had $40 in my pocket one time. Listen, I'm going to tell you a true story. I had $40 in my pocket. $40. And I was doing really bad. This is in 2010. I'll never forget this. And I went to Tybro. No, matter of fact, it was 2011. I went to Tybro. I had $40. And 
I wanted to get a CD to help me get some money. I was like, let me get some one of these tones to help me. And the CDs were twenty dollars a piece. And I pulled out the prosper the Jupiter Pluto Prosperity um, CD, right? And um, Miss Kathy came, Dr. Gibson, Master Osario came, and she said, "What you going? What you got going on?" I said, "I need to get me something because my money ain't right. Like I'm doing real bad. And I was doing real bad too. I was sleeping on the floor in somebody else's house." Scraping dollars together to pay my little two hundred dollars for all of my bills. All my bills was two hundred. Then I had to pay my own phone bill. So I was getting rent, lights, water, and internet to sleep on the floor for two hundred a month. Shouts out to Eat a Mad Assassin. Looked out for the guy, and I then I would get over to to um to Tybro and I had four two twenties in my pocket. And she looked at me and she said she 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 took it out of my hand put it back on the shelf and she pulled it back out and she said and she handed me another one I looked at it and it was like um removing negative karma removing negative karma was the first CD I ever got from Tybro and I looked at it and I said removing negative karma I'm broke I need some damn money what you talking I, I was almost insulting in my mind right and then she looked at me and she said sometimes you gotta remove the darkness before the light will come in. I was like, what? And I was like, maybe she got a point. No money can get to me because I got too much darkness. And if she's a master, she can see it. If this is going to help me get some of the karma out, I'm going to get the karma out. So I reach in my pocket because I'm proud and I don't want to know that's all I got. So you know how you got two bills in your pocket? I knew I only had two 20s and I slid one of them loose. And pulled out my pocket and and handed it to water just like this. She put her hands up. She was like, on me. She didn't know that's half that's half the money. I was gonna give her half the money I had. But I but I was gonna give it to her to honor what she was what what they had what the, the work they had put in to help me. I was gonna honor that with half the money that I had it to my name. And then she said. I didn't say, well, I only got 40. If I get this 20, it's going to be... I didn't say nothing. I just went in my pocket, pulled it 20. And as fast as I did that, she said, she said, this one, she said, this one on me. I cried like a girl. Oh, if I think about it hard enough, I can cry right now because I can recreate that. Anytime when somebody be coming and telling me about you know what I'm saying? Like, um, my humanity or humility or how could you, Kair? You don't know my you don't know my story. You don't know things that's happened to me in 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 the darkest places of me that you don't know nothing about, or the people that I've helped that I ain't gave I ain't charged them nothing. You don't you don't know. You don't know, yo. People you know Jokers don't know. So I don't I don't even um No, I cry like a girl. Boys and girls cry differently. Boys and girls cry differently. Men and women cry differently. I cry like a girl. You can't tell me what I mean. You wasn't there. You can, how you gonna tell me what I didn't cry like? Did you see it? <laughs> Call Tybro tomorrow before four o'clock. Get Miss Kathy on the phone and say, that time Kyrie said he cried. He said he cried like a girl. Was he crying like a girl or crying like an individual? And let her tell you. She was, because the only, only three people was there was me, her, and June Buckner. You wasn't there, so you can't tell me how I was crying. Crying like a girl. A, a girl cried different. A, a boy be making it up. <laughs> a girl, she be little. Like her emotions is really flowing through her. She like you can feel you you can feel it all the way around when a boy cries. You can't feel it all around when the boy is crying. You tell him to shut up or whatever. You give him some candy, suck it right up. A girl when she crying, the energy man is on a whole nother level, yo. You feel that thing coming up from out your soul. It's okay. Maybe you ain't had no girls really crying around you for you to feel it. But I know the difference. But yeah, crying like a girl. Are you a girl? You should know what crying like a girl is. So, um, yeah, so that's it for the day. 
Let's go get this fourth video. Thank y'all for staying to the end. Peace.